Hello guys and welcome back to our Law on Obligations and Contract series. So nandito na tayo dun sa huling part ng Extinguishment of Obligation. So this is based from the Civil Code Articles 1231 to 1304 at nasa bandang huli na nga tayo. Maabot na natin yung Article 1304. Okay? So before ang lahat, please subscribe to our channel to alert you on the release of upcoming videos. And don't forget to like this video if you think this uh, this is a big help for you. And of course, uh, pwede kayong mag-sign up dun sa link natin below para uh, ma-access nyo ang ating full course na ito. So, um, may mga dinidevelop na tayong mga different questions para matest nyo yung sarili nyo. Okay? So, let's start. Okay, Extinguishment of Obligations. Um, last time, na-discuss na natin ang part 1, which is the payment or performance. So far, yan yung pinakamalaki na part. Okay? Okay, so ayan. Part 2, we discuss the special modes of payment, such as the uh, application of payment, the shown, session, and the tender of payment plus consignation. As well as other modes of extinguishment, such as the loss of the thing, condonation, and confusion. And nandito na nga tayo sa part 3, covering compensation and novation. So, from articles 1278 to 1304. Okay, so let's start with compensation. Last time, nabanggit natin na there are different types of compensation. So, nandyan nga siya, 1, 2, 3, and 4. First, we have the legal compensation. Second, the conventional. Third, facultative. And lastly, the judicial compensation. So, explain natin in detail yung mga yan. Unahin mo natin yung legal compensation. Pag sinabi natin legal compensation, ito yung compensation that takes effect by operation of law and extinguishes both debts okay, to the concurrent amount even though the creditors and debtors are not aware of the compensation. So, it happens automatically. It doesn't require the consent of either the debtor or creditors tulad ng nasabi natin. So, this is based from Article 1290. So, ayan, um, uh, Article 1278, compensation, so ito yung ano, general definition naman ng compensation, okay? Regardless of what type, ito yung Article 1278. Pero yun nga, yung Article 1290 na din, uh, tinignan natin kanina, ito yung legal compensation, okay? So, ayan, ano nga ba yung mga different requisites ng legal compensation? So, nandito, in order that compensation may be proper. So, remind ko lang, um, although hindi binanggit specifically kung anong type ng compensation ito, ang tinutukoy na compensation dito is yung legal compensation. Okay? So, it is necessary. Okay? So, nandiyan yung word na necessary. So, ibig sabihin, dapat mamit nyo itong mga requisites na to. So, number one, each one of the obligors be principally bound and that he be at the same time a principal creditor of the other. So, mamaya explain natin yan. May example pa tayo dyan. That both debts consist in a sum of money or if the things you are consumable, they be of the same kind and also of the same quality if the latter has been stated. Okay? Number three, the two, the, the two debts are or be due. Number four, they be liquidated and demandable. And lastly, that neither, uh, that, that need not over neither of them, there be any retention or controversy. Um, commenced by third person and communicated in due time to the creditor. So, isa-isay natin. Umpisa natin dun sa una, yung, yan, okay? So, ito yun. Ito yung number one. That each one of the obligors be principally, uh, bound principally and that he be at the same time a principal creditor of the other. So, ayan. Ito yung example natin. Okay? So, nandito, D is indebted to C daw. At the same time, okay, G is the guarantor of this indebtedness. Itong D is indebted to C, di ba? So, assuming C is also indebted to G. Okay? So, this time, si G, si G, si G naman ang merong ano, uh, claim against kay C. So, is there a legal compensation between G and C? Yun ang tanong ng problem natin. The answer is no. There will be no legal compensation. Bakit? Dahil sa first requirement natin. Each 
parties must be bound principally. So, what do we mean by bound principally? So, ito, i-ano na natin. I-illustrate na natin. So, kung makapansin nyo, meron tayong dalawang lumabas dito. So, si C daw ay principally liable kay G. However, si G is only subsidiarily liable to C. So, bakit natin nasabing subsidiarily liable lang siya? Okay? Dahil, malamang-lamang, dahil hindi siya principally liable, dahil ang definition ng principally liable, ikaw mismo yung may utang. Pero in the case of G, secondarily liable lang siya or subsidiarily liable lang siya. Ibig sabihin, maging liable lang siya if hindi nakakulek si C kay D. So, yun. Yun ang, uh, yun ang ano, uh, silbi ng guarantor, di ba? Kapag hindi makakulek si C from D, dahil, let's say, insolvent na si D, pwede siyang mag, okay? mangulike against G, the guarantor. So, G is only subsidiarily liable to C, while C is principally liable to G. So, in this case, hindi niya na po na meet yung first, uh, first ano natin, um, requirement that each uh, of the obligors be bound principally. Okay? So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng bound principally. Okay? So, next. Legal compensation, okay, again, so this is now the second requirement that both debts consist in a sum of money or if the things due are consumable, they be of the same kind and also of the same quality if the latter has been stated. Okay, so uh, i-determine natin itong mga to kung pwede ba ang legal compensation sa mga to. So first, we have, yes, this is Okay, pwedeng magkaroon ng legal compensation dito sa first ano natin. So, D is indebted to C for 10,000. C is indebted to D for 9,000. Okay? So, take note, hindi kailangan na parehas yung amount. Ang required lang is dapat of the same kind sila, di ba? Of the same kind. So, parehong pera ang babayaran ng bawat isa. At syempre, kung makapansin nyo, uh, na-meet rin nila yung first requirement kanina na in-illustrate natin, which is, Si D ay principally bound kay C at si C principally bound kay D din, okay? So, by the way, um, ang tawag dito, ito yung tinatawag nating partial compensation. So, mababasa nyo ito pagdating sa Article 1281, okay? So, the first uh, example natin ay pwedeng magkaroon ng legal compensation. The second one, there will be no legal compensation bakit hindi naman of the same kanyang obligation natin. Ito magbabayad ng 10,000 ito magbabayad ng specific ring. So, hindi pwedeng mag, uh, magkaroon ng legal compensation yan. And next example natin, hindi rin pwede. Dahil, although magde-deliver sila pareho ng sugar, okay, pero hindi naman parehas ng klase ng sugar. Yung isa class A, uh, siguro mas ma magandang klase ito kaysa dito sa class B. Okay, so in this case, hindi po pwedeng magkaroon ng legal compensation. Okay, dahil in violation nito sa ating second requisite. Next, okay, third requisite that the two debts be due. So, very simple, hindi na nakating kailangan ng example dyan. Okay, kailangan yung parehong utang kailangan nag-mature na. Kasi kung yung isa hindi pa nag-mature, hindi magkakaroon ng legal compensation. Ganun lang kasimple yun. So, dapat nag-mature na both yung ating mga utang para magkaroon ng legal compensation. Okay? So, by the way, um, hindi natin nasabi kung ano yung compensation. Ang mangyari is once na compensate, okay, nagkaroon ng legal compensation, wala nang liability yung dalawang parties, okay? Automatically. Automatic po yun. Wala na silang utang sa isa't isa. Yun ang mangyayari doon, okay? Um, so, ne okay. Next, pang-apat. So, this is the fourth requirement. They be liquidated and demandable. So, what we... What do we mean by liquidated? Pag sinabi natin liquidated, na-determine na natin yung amount. Okay? So, in this case, tignan natin. X is indebted to Y for 10,000 by virtue of a debt. So, oh, meron na tayong na-determine amount, which is 10,000. On the other hand, Y is also indebted to X by virtue of a court case, and the amount is not yet de determined. So, in this case, hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng legal compensation by the very simple reason na hindi pa liquidated yung isang debt. Hindi determined pa lang. Malamalamang kung hindi pa siya liquidated, hindi pa rin siya demandable. Okay? So, ganun lang yun. 
Okay, so dapat liquidated na pareho. Alam na natin yung uh, value pareho para alam natin if there will be only a partial fulfillment, di ba? Hindi whole, hindi hindi whole uh, uh, partial fulfillment. There will be only a partial compensation, not a whole compensation or full compensation. Okay? And last exa uh, last requisite natin is that over neither of them there be any retention or controversy. Comments by third persons and communicated in due time to the debtor. So, this is our example. A owes B 10,000. B owes A 10,000. So, okay, yung ano, first requisite natin, which is um, both are principally liable and then both debts are of the same kind. So, wala rin nabanggit with whether they are, what do you call this? They are already due. So, ang assumption dito, nag-due na nga. Um, and, of course, they are both liquidated kasi alam natin yung amount, parehang 10,000. Okay, so, um, nakasalalay lang na lang ito sa fifth. Okay, fifth, ano natin, fifth re requisite. So, again, tingnan natin, B also owes C 10,000. Okay. Actually, uh, given the circumstances ni A and B, pwede na, actually, pwede nang magkaroon ng compensation nito dito based on Requisites number 1 to 4. However, itong number 5, okay, anong nangyari? C causes the garnishment of the cre credit of B. Ang nangyari, okay, si C, nag-ano ng garnishment, so kung ano man yung garnishment, isearch na lang natin, pero ang naging result ng garnishment ay, uh, kailangan bayaran muna ni B yung utang niya kay C. So in this case, um, si B, kapag nagbayad siya kay C, ano mangyayari? Okay? Kung uh, tawag dito, um, A not not to pay B, 10,000 as okay? Kasi, what if 10,000 na lang ang pera niya, di ba? What if 10,000 na lang ang pera niya? So, kapag automatically nagkaroon ng compensation between A and B, o oh, wala na, extinguish na yung utang nila pereho, pero, wala na pambayad si B kay C if 10,000 na lang yung pera niya. So, yun ang tinitignan natin dito. So, in this case, um, hindi pa magkakaroon ng legal compensation dahil merong pang controversy, controversy na kinomens ng third person. At yung third person na yun, uh, sa perspective ni A and B, ay si C. Diba? Sabi ni C, ako muna dapat ang babayaran ni B. Okay? So, as hanggat hindi pa siya nagbabayad sa akin, hindi muna siya dapat magbayad kay A. Okay? So, ganun yun. So, kung hindi pa, wala pang karapatan magbayad si B kay A, ibig sabihin, hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng legal compensation between A and B dahil hindi pa pwede ma-extinguish yung utang ni B kay A. So, ganun lang kasimple yun. Okay? Um, so, in this case, hindi pa pwede magkaroon ng legal compensation. That is number 5 or our fifth requisite under legal compensation. Okay, next, Article 1280. What is Article 1280? Anong sinasabi dito? Notwithstanding the provisions of the preceding article, the guarantor may set up compensation as regards what the creditor may owe the principal debtor. So, kung hindi nyo itong naintindihan, let's give an example. Okay? Okay. So, D is indebted to C for 10,000. G is the guarantor. Assuming C is indebted to D for 9,000 then. Is there a legal... Okay, so, burayin natin to. Kinapipaste ulit. Hindi natin natanggal kanina. Okay, so, alisin natin yan. Mali yan. Okay? So, period lang dito. Period. D is indebted to C for 10,000. G is the guarantor. Assuming C is indebted to D then for 9,000. Okay? So, what is the effect of this? So, paano natin may apply yung kaninang ano, yung Article 1280? So, ganito. Um, if D fa fails to pay, ano magiging ano nun? Anong magiging effect nun? Ang magiging effect nun is, ayun, papasok na ang trabaho ni guarantor. Siya na ang pwedeng singilin ni C. Okay? Ang nangyari kasi, hindi makapagbayad si D kay C because of insolvency. So, C will have the right to go against G. So, that's how guarantee works. Okay ba? Tatandaan nyo yan. Okay? Although, pag-aaralan natin yan, pagdating ng law on sales or, okay, dun sa part ng other credit transaction. Okay? So, ayan. So, ang mangyayari, kapag sisingilin na niya na si G, ano ang pwedeng maging right ni G? Ang right ni G, nakalpaloob dito sa Article 1280. Sabi niya, G may set up compensation as to what C may owe D or the debtor, di ba? Which is 9,000. Therefore, kapag maniningil si C, 
kay D, ang pwede lang masingil ni C ay up to 1,000. Bakit? Kasi habang naniningil si, si C ng 10,000, isiset up ni G yung utang ni C kay D na 9,000 as compensation. So, 10,000 minus 9,000, it will only be, ang magiging net ay 1,000 only. Okay? So, that is the application of Article 1280. So, it is very, ano, very uh, important or very useful for uh, this, this one, yung mga guarantors. Okay? So, next. Let's go to conventional or voluntary compensation. So, Article 1282. The parties may agree agree upon the compensation of debts which are not yet due. Okay. So, by the way, um, yung mga binanggit natin kaninang mga requirements ay para sa legal compensation. So, kapag hindi na meet ang isa sa mga requirement na yun, anong mangyayari? Hindi pwede ang legal compensation. Okay. Kung hindi pwede ang legal compensation, overall, hindi na ba pwedeng mangyari ang compensation in general? So, the answer is no. Pwede pa rin. Okay. And this time, um, dito pwedeng pumasok so con si conventional compensation. Wherein, ang kailangan dito pero is kailangan ng consent ng both parties para magkaroon ng legal uh, ng compensation. Okay, so that's what you call conventional compensation. So take note na ang legal compensation hindi po kailangan ng consent ng either of the party. So kahit wala, it happens automatically. However, in conventional kailangan muna ng consent ng both parties para uh, magkaroon ng compensation of debts. Okay? And eventually it will lead to the extinguishment of their obligations. Okay? So, ayan. Next, we have judicial compensation. So, based on Article 1283, if one of the parties to a suit uh, over an obligation has a claim for damages against the other, the former may set it off by proving his right to set damages and the amount thereof. So, by the way, ang sinabi natin kapag judicial compensation, ang magde-decide ng... Uh, compensation ay si court. So, ayan. Pinagtatalunan nila sa court, usually. And usually, ano yan, uh, usually, ang mga ang mga application yan is sa mga pagkaklaim ng damages or sa mga pag-award ng damages. So, may mga times na namimitigate yung damages or nababawasan so, kasi nagkakaroon ng compensation or what. Okay? So, ayan. Now, let's go to the last type of Uh, compensation. That is the facultative compensation. So, last time nung introduce natin tong mga different uh, modes of extinguishment of obligation, sabi natin, ang facultative compensation, um, kailangan ng consent nung party na pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. Okay? So, yun yung facultative. Ibig sabihin, um, between uh, two parties, isa lang ang pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. Okay ba? Okay. So, ito yung mga examples natin ng facultative compensation. Number one, based on Article 1287, par Paragraph 1. Number two, based on Article 1287, Paragraph 2. And number three, based on Article 1288. So, one of the debts arise from a depositum or, di ba, deposit, contract of deposit, and, or komodatum. Okay? Number two naman is yung ano, claim for support due by gratuitous title. So, mamaya, example natin yan. And lastly, yung... Ah, uh, tawag dito, obligation arising from penal offense. Okay, so kung may ginawa kang ano, criminal act. So ayan, yung civil liability na nag-exist doon. Okay? So ayan, example muna number one One of the debts arise from depositum or from obligations of a depositary or of a bailey and comodatum. So siguro hindi nyo pa nagigets kung ano yan, depositum, so the de de contract of deposit. And ano yung bailey, yung usually ano ba yan, um, yan ata yung pinahiram, di ba, pinahiram, bailor, tama, bailor, nagpahiram, okay, bailey, pinahiram, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, okay, so, ayan, example tayo, X is obliged to give Y a t-shirt, so meron siyang obligation na magbigay ng t-shirt, okay, si X, naiwan niya yung t-shirt niya kay Y, so, ano mangyayari dito? Okay, kapag inacknowledge ni Y na naiwan nga yung t-shirt ni X, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon ng uh, magkakaroon ng kontrata which is a contract of deposit wherein uh, si X o oh, yun nga um uh, habang hindi pa kinukuha ni X yung naiwan niyang t-shirt kay Y, uh, may obligation si Y na syempre, wag ano yun, parang kumaga wag gamitin, wag 
whatsoever yung uh, panatilihin sa tamang uh, condition whatsoever parang ganoon di ba and kapag kinlaim na ni X may obligation si Y na ibalik okay ibalik yung t-shirt kay X kasi naiwan niya lang yan okay so ganito ang tanong okay pwede bang sabihin ni Y na okay X di ba meron kang di ba meron kang obligation sa akin na bigyan mo ako ng t-shirt okay at may naiwan kang t-shirt dito pwede bang yun na lang yun Okay, hindi. Actually, hindi, hindi siya nagtatanong. Yun na lang yun ha, kukunin ko na lang to sa akin na lang to. So, pwede ba yun? Pwede bang mag-claim ng compensation? Kasi, basically, magkakaroon ng compensation doon eh, di ba? Parang kumbaga, kapag pumayag si X, o oh, okay, uh, ang tawag dito, is yun nga, wala na silang obligation pareho. Si X, hindi na magbibigay ng t-shirt. Si Y, hindi niya na rin kailangan ibalik yung t-shirt na yun, na naiwan. Okay? So, pwede ba yun? Pwede bang i-compel ni Y si X na wag niya na lang kunin kasi yun na lang yung pambayad niya dun sa t-shirt na 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 obligado siyang ibigay. Okay? So pwede ba yun? The answer is no. Okay? Ang may consent dito actually is or ang kailangan ng consent dito in this facultative compensation example ay si X, okay? So si X ang kailangan ng uh, consent, okay? So kung hindi pumayag si X, wala. Okay? Pero kung pumayag si X, okay lang. Okay? So, this is a facultative compensation turn to conventional, di ba? Kapag pumayag si X, okay? Yun ang mangyayari. Okay, pero what if si X mismo ang nagsabi na, why? Di ba, naiwan ko yung t-shirt dyan sa'yo, okay? At sinabi ko last time na bibigyan kita ng t-shirt, okay, yan na lang yun. Wag mo na, hindi ko na lang kukunin. So, pwede yun. So, that this is facultative compensation dahil yun nga, yung si X, siya yung pwede. Okay? Siya yung pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. Si Y hindi pwede in this case. Okay? In a contract of deposit. So, next. Let's go to a contract of kumodatum. So, ganun din. Okay? Same concept. Okay? Uh, yung isa, hindi pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. Yung isa lang ang pwede. So, in this case, walaan nyo nga kung sino ang pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. So, ang nangyari dito is, si X obliged to give Y a laptop. So, meron siyang obligation na magbigay ng laptop kay Y. And si X nagpahiram ng laptop kay Y. So, this is basically a contract of comodatum. Okay, so ang tanong, pwede bang sabihin ni Y na, di ba, bibigyan mo ako ng laptop o yung pinahiram mo sa akin, yun na lang yun. Pwede ba yun? The answer is no. Dahil, again, in this situation, si X ang merong uh, right to uh, set off. Right of set off or right of compensation. So, in this case, yun nga. Kapag pumayag si X, okay lang. Di ba? Magkakaroon ng compensation. Pero kung hindi siya pumayag, hindi pwedeng ipilit ni Y. Okay? And ganun din. Kapag si X ang... Uh, tawag dito? Kapag si X naman ang nag... Uh, nagsabi na... O, oh, di ba meron akong promise sa'yo na bibigyan kita ng laptop? Okay. Yung pinahiram ko sa'yo, huwag mo na lang ibalik. Yan na yun. So, pwede yun. Okay? Magkakaroon ng compensation doon. Dahil si X naman yung, uh, kumbaga, kailangan ng consent dito sa facultative compensation ito. Okay? Next, let's go to the second example. Okay? Up against a creditor who has a claim for support due by gratuitous title. So, what is this? Okay, guys. In this example... We have uh, uh, W is the ex-wife of H. So basically, hiwalay na sila, nag-divorce na or nagpaanal. So H was ordered by the court to give monthly support of 50,000 to W for their children. Okay, so for their children. Um, w is indebted to H. So may utang si W kay H for 50,000 din. So nagkataon. Assuming at a specific uh, period of time, um, both the death of H, which is to give a monthly support of 50,000, and the death of W are due. Okay? So, ang tanong, in this case, sino ang pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation in this case? Okay? Ang pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation in this case is si wife. Okay? Si wife. Pwede yung sabihin na husband, or I mean ex-husband, wag mo na lang ipapadala yung monthly support mo na 50,000 dahil yun na lang yung ano pambayad ko dun sa utang ko. Okay? So, pwede yun. Pero, hindi pwedeng sabihin ni H na ex-wife, hindi na lang kita padadalahan ng 50,000 na support dahil meron ka pang utang sa akin na 50,000. So, yun na lang yung pambayad mo. Hindi pwedeng 
hindi niya pwedeng ipilit, i-compel yung ganong klaseng compensation. So, medyo unfair yung situation natin in this case. Pero, ganun talaga sa facultative compensation. Isang party lang ang, kumbaga, uh, pwedeng mag-compel ng compensation. Okay? And let's go to our last example. One of the debts consists in civil liability arising from a penal offense. Okay, so example, X is indebted to Y for 100,000. Y attempted to kill X. Because of the shock, X was awarded by the court ng 100,000 damages. Y was also ano, uh, criminally prosecuted. So, ang mangyayari dito, um, uh, in this case, yung utang ni X na 100,000, pwedeng makompensate yun. So, sino ang pwedeng magkumpel ng compensation in this case? So, obviously, it will be X. So, si X, pwede niyang sabihin na, o oh, Y, habang ano, kinakausap niya habang nakakulong, okay? So, Y, okay? Y. Wag mo na, kahit wag mo nang bayaran yung 100,000 na damages na inaward sa akin ng court, pero, quits na tayo. Hindi ko nababayaran yung utang ko sa'yo. Okay? So, pwede yun. Actually, pwede yun. Pwede niyang i-compel yun. Pwede niyang ipilit yun. However, hindi pwede niyang ipilit nung kabilang party, which is si Y. Hindi niya pwede sabihin na, hindi ko nababayaran yung damages sa'yo kasi, meron ka namang utang sa akin, hindi pwede yun. Okay? So, ang pwede mag-compel in this case ay si X. Okay? So, tatanda nyo yan. That is the different examples of facultative compensation. So, next, um, Article 1284. Anong application nitong Article 1284? When one or both debts are accessible or voidable, they may be compensated against each other before they are judicially rescinded. Okay? So, meron tayong example pala dito. Um, A owes B 10,000. Subsequently, A through fraud was able to uh, make B sign a promissory note that B is indebted to A for the same amount. So, the same amount na 10,000. So, ang nangyari dito, um, nagkaroon ng obligation, dati mayroon ng obligation si A to B na 10,000. Again, at nagkaroon din ng obligation din si, sino to? Si B kay A. Pero, true fraud, itong contract na to ay voidable. Ito, valid to. Ito, voidable. Okay? Kapag isa pala, isa sa mga ano, um, obligation ay voidable, pwede pa rin magkaroon ng compensation. So, yun ang sinabi dito eh. Okay? When one or both debts are receivable or voidable, they may be compensated against each other before they are judicially rescinded or avoided. Okay? So, um, pagdating ng contracts kasi, mapag-aaralan nyo kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng mga voidable contracts, receivable contract, or whatsoever. Okay? Pero for now, okay, theory lang muna tayo, yun nga, pwede pa rin magkaroon ng compensation dito. Okay? Basically, generally, okay? So, 1284. Next, 1285. What is 1285? The debtor who has consented to the assignment of rights made by a creditor in favor of a third person cannot set up against the assignee the compensation which would pertain to him against the assignor unless the assignor was notified by the debtor at the same time he gave his consent that he reserved his right to the compensation. So, moving up. Uh, Moving on, if the creditor communicated the session to him but the debtor did not consent thereto, the latter may set up the compensation of the debts previous to the session but not of subsequent ones. If the assignment is made without the knowledge of the debtor, he may set up the compensation of all credits uh, prior to the same and also later wa uh, later ones until he had knowledge of the uh, assignment. So, um, ito, i-summarize natin ito. This is compensation Uh, when, ano, pag, habang ina-assign yung mga debts, okay? So, ang nangyayari kasi dito, ang nangyayari is, um, mamaya, pag may example tayo, makikita nyo, okay? Mamaya, makikita nyo. Pero, for, for now, ayan, meron tayong ginawang summary na table dito, okay? Kapag nangyari daw ang assignment with the debtor's consent, however, ah, uh, hindi, hindi pala however, with the reservation to compensation, The debtor can set up compensation as to any debts due. Okay? So, ayan, mamaya illustrate natin yan. Pangalawang, ano naman, pangalawang situation dito is with the debtor's consent, however, without reservation of compens uh, to compensation. So, in this case, hindi pwedeng mag-set up ng compensation as to any debts due. And next, third situation natin, without the debtor's consent, so, he can set up compensation as to debts Uh, due prior to com uh, prior to assignment okay and by the way ang ginamit pala na word dito ay session so session and basically this is assignment assignment din lang to okay
assignment. Okay, assignment. So, ang ginamit nating word ay assignment. So, huwag kayong malito. Okay, so ayan, ginamit niya rin dito, hindi siya consistent. Pero ewan natin, baka may technical na pagkakaiba. Pero basically, ganito, uh, session, assignment, yan din lang yun. Okay, so ayan. Um, and lastly, without debtor's knowledge, can set up compensation as to debts prior to debtor gaining knowledge of assignment. Okay, so meron tayong example, ayan. Napakagandang example. So, X is indebted to Y for 100,000. Okay, so Y, on the other hand, is indebted to X for the following amount. So, mas marami... Mas marami, pero pag tinotal mo, 55,000 lang ito lahat. Okay, by the way, 55,000 lang yan lahat. Okay? So, hindi pa yung sapat para makover yung buong 100,000. Um, okay. Uh, assuming on June 24, so by the way, nandito rin yung mga no, corresponding due dates nila. Okay? Para makita natin kung ano yung mga nag-June na. Okay? So, assuming on June 24, why assign uh, the 100,000 to, to Z? X gain knowledge of assignment on June 26. How much can Z collect from X? So, i-analyze natin. Okay? So, first situation tayo. Ano yung first situation? Tingnan natin. With debtor's consent, with reservation to compensation. So, ibig sabihin, ganito ang nangyari. Nung ina-assign, okay, assuming on June 24, yung, yung, nung June 24, nung ina-assign ni Y, yung 100,000 kay Z, pag sinabi natin assignment, uh, binibigay niya na yung right kay D. Ibig sabihin, in this case, magiging bagong, uh, bagong creditor niya na is si Z. Okay? So, ayan. Uh, ang mangyayari is, ang nangyayari is, mayroong knowledge si X. So, alam niya na inassign kay Z. At the same time, pero, ni-reserve niya yung right niya as to compensation. So, ibig sabihin, pwede siyang mag, uh, pwede siyang mag-set off or, pwede niyang i-compensate yung mga debts na mag na. So, for example, okay, assuming uh, si Z mangungulekta na at, let's say, July 15. So, para makover na lahat ng debt. Okay, para makover lahat nitong debt. Okay, so, magkano ang pwede niyang masingil? Ang pwede niyang masingil ay, okay, 45,000. Kasi pwedeng iset up ni X yung lahat ng Okay, pwedeng iset up ni X yung lahat ng debt which is 55,000. So, pag in natin to 10 plus 12 plus 8 plus 10 plus 15, 55,000. So, ang pwede lang masingil ni X and ni Z, I mean, ay 45,000. Okay, next naman, when debtor consent, okay, with debtor's consent, pero without reservation, hindi niya ni-reserve yung right niya, hindi niya sinabi na, oh, meron pa rin akong ano, right to compensation, hindi niya sinabing ganun. Despite na alam niya na ano yung uh, ina-assign yung kanyang ano yung kanyang liability sa to another person, di ba? At nag-consent siya. So in this case, wala na siyang mag hindi na siya magkakaroon ng right as to compensation. Ibig sabihin, ayan. Pag mauulit si Z, makokolekta niya yung buong 100,000, wala siyang pwedeng i-set up as compensation. Okay? So next situation, habang habang ina-assign ni Y kay Z on June 24, ang nangyari is Alam ni debtor pero hindi siya nag-consent. Hindi, hindi pwede. Ayaw ko, ayaw ko. Huwag mong, wag mong i-assign. Pero actually, wala siya magagawa dahil pag sinabi natin assignment, it doesn't matter kung anong say ni debtor. Okay? Na, na kay creditor lang yun. Okay? So, in this case, pwede niyang iset up ang compensation as to debts due prior to assignment. Okay? So, lahat ng debts prior to assignment. Okay, so... Prior to assignment. So, kailan yung assignment dito? Ang assignment ay June 24. So, ano yung mga debts na nag-due prior to assignment? These are 10,000, 12,000, and 8,000. So, hindi ito prior. Siyempre, June 25 yan. Eh, July 1 yan. Eh. Okay? So, in this case, pag pinag-add natin yun, 10 plus 12 plus 8, we have 30,000 na pwede niyang i-set up na compensation. So, therefore, ang pwede makolekta ni Z ay 100,000 minus 30,000 will be 70,000. Okay? And last, last situation tayo. Without debtor's knowledge. Okay? Ano yung without debtor's knowledge? Um, unlike sa without debtor's consent kasi, yung without consent, may knowledge siya, pero hindi siya pumayag. Pero this time, wala siyang kalam-alam na nagkaroon ng compensation. So, let's analyze. Okay? So, ayan. Um... Nagkaroon lang daw siya ng knowledge of assignment on June 26. So, sabi dito, 
kapag ito ang situation natin, pwede niyong maset up ang compensation as to debts due prior to debtor gaining knowledge of assignment. So, so kailan yun? Okay, so ano yung mga na-cover na debt? So, ang mga na-cover na debt ng ano, yung before June 26 ay June, 20, June 13, June 18, June 22, and June 25. So, hindi niya na-cover yung July 1. So therefore, ayan, ang pwede niyo lang ma-set up as compensation ay uh, 10,000, 12,000, 8,000 and 10,000. So totaling up to 40,000. So ayan, 40,000 ang pwede niyo ma-set up na compensation. Therefore, kapag maniningil na si Z, ang makokolekta niya lang ay 60,000. So that will be 100,000 minus 40,000. So 60,000. Okay? So that is article, what do you call this? Article 1285. Okay? So let's move on. Okay, let's move on to Article 1285. Okay, 1285. Okay, but pares na 1285. So, this is, I believe, hindi ito 1285. Nakapipaste na naman natin. So, baka 1286 ito. Okay, so never mind. So, pakicheck na lang yung ano nyo, uh, civil code. So, feeling ko 1286 ito. So, compensation takes place by operation of law. Even though the debts may be payable at different places. But there shall be an indemnity for expenses of exchange or transportation to the place of payment. So, ayan. Example tayo para mas pwenting dyan yun. So, he also obliged to deliver to be a 100 sacks of rice to Davao, or in Davao. B is also bound to deliver a 100 sacks of rice of the same kind. Okay, of the same kind. So okay, sya in Bulacan. Okay, so pwede ba magkaroon ng ano dito, um, legal compensation? Okay, so wala namang ano, uh, mukhang wala naman tayong violation dun sa mga different, uh, tawag dito, mga different uh, requisites. So, malamang lamang pwede, okay? So, pwede magkaroon ng legal compensation. Pero, uh, yung sinasabi ng specific article na ito, ano yun, yung ano, as regards to expenses related to the compensation. Uh, pag pinag-compare mo kasi, yung expenses hindi pareho. Yung the expenses for transportation of the rice to Davao is 4,000. However, sa Bulacan, 1,000 lang. Mas mura. Okay, so in this case, um, kung na-compensate yan lahat, uh, di ba, ang mangyayari is, ano, di ba, ang tawag dito? Um, uh, lugi. Lugi yung isa. Kasi yung isa, mas malaki yung, ano, mas malaki yung uh, supposedly uh, gagasusin niya na uh, transportation expense compared doon sa isa. So, ang mangyayari is, yun nga, um, yung difference, kailangan i-endemnify. So, in this case, if A claims compensation, he must indemnify B of the amount of 3,000 dahil nalugi siya ng 4,000. Okay? So, ayan. So, that is, this is specific article. So, let's move on now to novation. Okay? So, last time, ito yung, uh, actually, nadagdagan under subrogation. Nilagyan natin ng legal subrogation and conventional subrogation. Okay? So, this is novation. Kinds of novation based from the Article 1291. So, meron tayong real novation which is change of prestation or the principal conditions. Okay? Affecting the, you know, different obligations natin. And then, we have personal novation wherein we replace the subjects involved in the obligation. It's either the debtor Or the creditor. So, kapag change in debtor, that is what you call substitution. However, if it is a change of creditor, that is called subrogation. Okay. So, isa-isa yung nating explain tong mga to. Okay. The effect of novation. So, in novation, actually, there is a change. Di ba? Sabi natin, nagkakaroon ng some changes such as The change of the prestation, that is what we call the real novation, or change of the uh, subjects, that is ano, uh, personal novation. So, specifically, substitution and subrogation. However, um, ang nangyayari talaga dito sa novation is, yung old obligation natin na ina-extinguish and then nagkakaroon ng panibagong obligation. So, this is... Um, this is evidenced by Article 1292. So, the old obligation is extinguished and... Uh, replaced by a new one, which is uh, stipulated by the parties. Okay, so ano ang effect if the original obligation is void? Okay, if the original obligation is void, of course the obli ah uh, there will be no novation. There will be no novation. The novation is void also. Okay, if the ayon if the original obligation was void. 
Okay, so ano yan? Naulit-ulit. If the orig oh, original obligation was void. So, ayan. If, okay, and then, then hindi pala naulit. If the original obligation is voidable, so, by the way, malaki ang pagkakaiba ng voidable sa void. Okay, pero i-explain natin yan pagdating natin ng contract. So, if the original obligation is voidable, ah, uh, ano yan? Effective if, ah, uh, okay. So, it will be, Okay, the novation will be effective if the contract is ratified before the novation or annulment or the annulment can be claimed by or the annulment can only be claimed by the debtor. So, this is under Article 1298. So, ang tatandaan nyo lang muna dyan, kapag void ang original obligation, novation is void then. However, if the original obligation is voidable, okay, Pwedeng, okay? Pwedeng valid yung novation natin. Okay? So, ayan. Ito yung mga, uh, tawag dito, ito yung mga magpapavalid dun sa uh, novation natin if the original obligation is voidable. Effective if it, if the contract is ratified before novation or the annulment can only be claimed by the debtor. So, that is based on Article 1298. Next, punta tayo sa if the, novation, uh, the new obligation is void. If the new obligation is void, um, yun, anong nangyayari? If the new obligation is void, the original one shall subsist. It will remain in force unless the parties intended that the former relation should be extinguished in any event. Okay, regardless kung valid ba or void yung new obligation. So, basically, under Article 1297, hindi pa rin magkakaroon ng novation. Kasi, yun nga. Um, hindi naman ma-extinguish yung uh, original uh, obligation, di ba? As a general rule, okay? So, ayan. Kapag void, so in summary, kapag void ang original obligation, void pa rin ang novation. Ganon din kapag void yung new obligation, void pa rin ang novation, okay? So, that is the effect of novation. Um, next is the effect of the novation on accessory obligation. So, ayan. What if meron tayong naka-attach na accessory obligation? So, ayan. When the principal obligation is extinguished in consequence of novation, accessory obligation may subsist only in so far as they may benefit third persons who did not give their consent. So, this is based on Article 1296. So, example tayo. Okay? A owes B 2,000 with an interest of 14,000. B owes C 280, which is uh, the interest, okay, actually interest na 14%, okay? So, si C ay isang third person, okay? So, anong nangyari? It was agreed among the parties that A would pay the interest of 280 to C, okay? So, naulit lang. So, in this case, besides the principal obligation of A, there is a stipulation in favor of C, a third person. Okay? So, by the way, this is a uh, stipulation for a true way pag tinignan nyo yung ano, article 1311, paragraph 2. Hindi lang ako sure kung yun nga yun talaga, pero malamang lamang yan yun. Okay, so later on, A and B executed another contract whereby they agreed that they A would deliver to be a television set in payment of the loan. So, gusto nilang innovate yung obligation. From an obligation to give 2,000, magiging obligation to give a television na lang siya. So, kapag television ang pinag-usapan natin, hindi nag-earn yan ng interest. Okay, so ang tanong, so ang tanong, may obligation pa rin ba si B? Kay C na magbayad ng 280, which is yung 280 dependent upon the interest on the 2,000 pesos. The answer is yes kapag hindi nag-consent si C dun sa novation. Okay, pero matutuloy pa rin yung novation. Okay, tandaan nyo yan. Matutuloy pa rin yung novation. Okay, pero itong accessory obligation na ito, yung obligation to give 280, bakit siya nasabing accessory? Kasi it is based on a principal obligation dito, yung 2,000, di ba? Kinocompute yan based on this. Okay, so... Meron pa rin yan. Magsasubsist pa rin yan. Okay? Pero kapag si C nagbigay ng consent dun sa novation, okay lang, sige. Bahala kayo. Okay? So, hindi na magkakaroon ng liability this time na magbigay ng 280. Okay? Kasi, di ba, hindi naman nag-earn ng interest ang television. Okay? So, that is this specific article. Okay? Effect of novation on the accessory obligations. So, let's move on to substitution. Okay? Specifically, substitution. Okay, this is based on Article 
So, novation which consists in substituting, substituting okay, a new debtor in the place of the original one may be made even without the knowledge or against the will of the latter. Okay, so it's in the latter, the si, um, original, okay, original one, okay. Uh, but not without the consent of the creditor. So, ang kailangan lang, okay, kapag nagkakaroon ng substitution or change of debtor, Ang kailangan lang talaga, ang pinaka-required lang is the consent of the creditor. It doesn't matter kung nag-consent si debtor or hindi, si original debtor. It doesn't matter actually. Okay? So, payment by the new debtor gives him the rights mentioned in Articles 1236 to 37. So, this is, by the way, the ano, uh, way back dun sa payment by uh, payment or performance natin. Diba? Okay? Payment or performance natin na ano. So, balikan nyo yun. Okay? So, ayan. Substitution. So, isa-isayin natin. Unahin mo natin yung delegation. Kung ano yung mga rules when it comes to sub substitution by dele delegation. So, by the way, substitution by delegation is defined as ano, a mode of substitution wherein um, the original debtor uh, takes the initiative to present to the creditor a new debtor. Okay? So, in this case, tignan natin kung sakto yun. So, DOC 1000. Uh, D proposed to C. Okay? So, tama. D takes the initiative to present to the creditor a new debtor. So, that will be X. Okay? Would substitute him as debtor. So, uh, once na uh, substitute, ang magiging bagong debtor na ay si X. Okay? So, it will become X owes C 1000 na. Okay? C agreed to the proposal. If at the time of the delegation, X was already insolvent, but his insolvency was neither of public knowledge. Okay. So, by the way, before we proceed with that, kapag nagkaroon ng delegation, okay, substitution, this is a type of novation, tatandaan nyo. Okay. Ang mangyayari is, yun nga, may extinguish na yung obligation ni C. Okay. The effect will be, may extinguish na yung obligation ay, ni C. Okay. In effect, ay may extinguish na yung obligation ni D, yung original debtor. Okay ba? Pero ang tanong, once na na-extinguish yung obligation niya, wala na bang way para ma-revive yung kanyang obligation. So, ayan. Sasagutin natin yan. C agreed to the proposal if, okay, if at the time of the delegation, X was already insolvent, but his insolvency was neither of public knowledge nor known to D, then D is not liable. Okay? Neither is D liable if the insolvency of X took place after he delegated his debt. Okay? So, uh, anong ibig sabihin nun? Okay? So, dito kasi, sa delegation, an old debtor's debt can be revived only by these two requisites. Number one, the new debtor's insolvency exists before or during the delegation. Okay? Or that's the time kung kailan sinasubstitute na, di ba? And number two, N yan na N. Okay? So, kailangan uh, mamit yung dalawang yan para ma-revive. N, okay, ah, uh, the, new, the old debtor has knowledge of insolvency or, okay, or number two, so, or if he has none. But the new debtor's insolvency is of public knowledge. Okay? So, balikan na lang yung example. Kapag si X, at the time of delegation, when si D, pinropose niya kay C yung ano, uh, na may bago ng, ano, may bago ng credit, uh, may bago ng debtor, um, ibig sabihin, Oh, uh, one step, ano na tayo? One step, um, nakakuha na tayo ng one step para magkaro, uh, magkaroon ng revival dun sa debt, di ba? Okay, so the next, ano naman, next step is, um, number two, is if either the debtor has knowledge, so, di ba, kapag may knowledge siya, so parang may, actually, may, pa, may halong pang luloko yun, kasi uh, at the moment na dinedelegate niya kay X yung kanyang debt, is, alam niya pala na insolvent na si X at that moment. Pero, Yun, pinresent niya pa rin kay C. At ito namang si C kasi hindi niya naman kasi alam kung insolvent tong si X or hindi. O, yun, inaccept niya. Okay, so yun na, na parang may halong pang luloko. Okay, so in that time, okay, at that moment, pwede nang ma-revive yung kanyang debt. Pwede nang ma-revive. Okay, pero what if wala siyang knowledge? Okay, what if wala siyang knowledge? Uh, pinropose niya si X as a new debtor, pero wala siyang, wala siyang knowledge na insolvent na pala siya at that moment. Okay. Uh, hindi na po pwedeng ma-revive yung kanyang debt. So, generally, hindi ma-revive yung kanyang debt. Okay? Pero, pwede pang ma-revive if, okay, the new debtor's insolvency is of public knowledge. Kung baga, pag public knowledge kasi yan, uh, pwedeng malaman ng kahit sino. For example, it is, um, it is, ano, 
uh, na, nasa newspaper yung kanyang insolvency. So, public knowledge na yun. So, kumbaga, hindi mo pwedeng invoke yung ano mo or ipalusot na uh, hindi ko alam eh, na insolvent yun eh. Okay? Hindi ko naman nabasa sa newspaper na insolvent yun. Hindi mo pwedeng idahilan yun yung ganung klaseng ano, uh, reason para hindi ma-revive yung debt sa'yo. So, at that time, pwedeng ma-revive yung debt. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kapag kung sakali, yun nga, malamang-lamang hindi makakasingil si C kay X eh, kasi insolvent siya. So, malamang-lamang, sinong pwedeng singilan ni X? Ayan, pwede kanyang singilan kasi marirevive yung debt mo kung ganun yung case, okay? Basta na-meet itong dalawang to. Tatandaan nyo lang, na-meet itong dalawang ito, number 1 and number 2. Okay, so this is based on Article 1295. Okay? So, next, let's go to expromission. Okay, so pag sa expromission, ang pagkakaiba lang naman ay... Ah, uh, yung kanina kasi pag delegation, kumbaga dinelegate, okay? Dinelegate ni old debtor sa new debtor yung kanyang debt. Pero sa expromission, it's actually the new debtor who takes the initiative to present himself as the new debtor to the creditor. Ah, uh, and again, expromission para makumpleto ang expromission kailangan lang din ng what do you call this? The ah, uh, the consent of the creditor. Hindi po kailangan ng consent ng debtor, okay? So Kapag expromission, kapag expromission ba, pwede ba ma-revive yung ano, yung debt nung debtor? So the answer is no. There will be no revival according to Article 1294. However, there may be a revival of the old debtor if the old debtor is an accomplice of the new debtor, 'di ba? So ayan, may paalam pang loloko, so pwede ma-revive pa rin, may chance. Okay, pero based on Article 1294, Uh, wala tayong rule gaya nung delegasyon kanina na kapag namit itong dalawang uh, dalawang to uh, pwedeng ma-revive okay wala tayong rule na ganun sa expromission okay so ayan yun po yung expromission okay next let's go to subrogation itong subrogation itong concept ng subrogation na discuss na natin ito dun sa payment actually kasi itong novation papuntang payment medyo ano pa rin siya eh. medyo connected pa rin siya kasi may mga mabdi-discuss tayo dito mga concepts na parehas na parehas or based siya dun sa mga concepts ng payment okay so ang subrogation po it transferred to the person subrogated uh, the credit with all the rights there to appertaining either the either against the debtor or against third person be, be they Uh, guarantors or possessors of mortgages subject to stipulation in a conventional subrogation. So, by the way, yung last time kasi, di ba, na nag-discuss natin sa payment or performance, meron yung instance doon na kapag, um, yun nga, merong consent ng debtor, yung tawag dito, yung pagbabayad ng isang third person, ang mayayari, it's uh, masusubrogate yung third person na yun to all the rights uh, which the creditor have. So, for example, Um, hindi ka makasingil doon sa debtor, pwede mong uh, i-foreclose kung ano man yung mga uh, chattel mortgages or kung anong klase mga mortgages or other securities na meron dyan. Okay, so kasi subrogated ka sa lahat ng rights. So, this is, again, ano, pa parehas lang, parehas lang na concept pagdating dito sa subrogation under novation. Okay? So, there are two types of subrogation. We have the legal subrogation and later on, we will have the conventional okay pero inahin muna natin tong legal subrogation so nagkakaroon ng legal co uh, subrogation if okay inulit ko if okay if um when a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred or when a third person not interested in the obligation pays with the express or tacit approval of the debtor or When, even without the knowledge of the debtor, a person interested in the fulfillment of the obligation pays without prejudice to the effects of confusion as to the latter's share. So, by the way, balikan nga natin yung subrogation. Ano bang nangyayari sa subrogation? This is the change of creditor, di ba? Yung substitution kasi change of debtor yun. Ito naman, change of creditor. Okay? So, for example, um, okay, ito, magbigay tayo muna ng example. A owes B, 1,000 secured by um, a first mortgage on the land of A. A also owes C 2,000. The debt is unsecured. Under the law, B is preferred creditor. So, this is an example of preferred creditor. Pero, mamaya muna natin explain yan. Okay. So, explain muna natin yung subrogation in general muna. So, ang nangyari dito, um, okay, if C pays the debt, of A to B. Okay, so C pays the debt of A to B. 
So, anong nangyari? Si C. Okay, so C. Okay, so si C. Binayaran niya yung utang ni A kay B. So, ayan. So, dito, di ba? Kung makapansin niyo si A, meron siyang utang kay B. Okay? With regards to 1,000 secured by uh, mortgage on land. Ganun din si A, may utang din kay C for 2,000. So, ang nangyari pero dito si C, binayaran niya si B. Okay? Doon sa utang ni A na 1,000. So, ang nangyari, ano mangyayari? Okay? With regards to the 1,000 peso debt, magkakaroon ng change of creditor. Hindi na si B ang creditor ni A. Si C na ang creditor ni A kasi binayaran siya, di ba? So, ang mangyayari is, yun nga, masosobrogate. Okay? Sabi dito sa legal subrogation, masosobrogate, okay, to all the rights. Si C, okay? So, by the way, that is, ano, subrogation in general, yung sinabi ko kanina. Kasi magiging bagong creditor na siya, okay? Pero let's move on to the, ano, meaning of legal subrogation. Pag sinabi kasi nating legal subrogation, uh, ganun ulit yung, ano, concept ng legal tapos yung conventional kanina, parang sa compensation. Kapag sinabi nating legal, automatically, masosubrogate yung creditor to all the rights of the previous creditor. So, in this case, ano ba ang right dito ni previous creditor, which is B? Kapag hindi siya makasingil ng 1,000, pwede niyang i-foreclose ang mortgage doon sa lupa ni A. So, kapag binayaran ni C, by the way, si C ay isang creditor, another creditor, okay? At binayaran niya ang isang creditor na mas preferred sa kanya. So, in this case, si C pasok siya sa first, ano natin, first, uh, pawag dito, first type of person na pwedeng automatically magkaroon ng legal subrogation. Okay ba? Or automatically magkaroon ng subrogation. So, in this case, si C, he is automatically subrogated to the rights of B. Okay? So, in this case, dahil hindi na si B, si C na ang bagong ano, so, meron na siyang right to uh, to claim the 1,000 pesos and in case of ano non-payment by A, pwede niyang i-foreclose ang mortgage on A's land. Okay? Kasi nga, legally subrogated siya. Okay ba? So, yun yung sinasabi dito. Under the law, B who, who is preferred. So, yun. Binanggit lang na mas preferred si B. So, which is, yun nga yung sinabi sa number one, when a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred. Binayarin ni C, si B, who is preferred. Okay? So, si C, automatically, subrogated siya. Legally, subrogated siya. Pero, paano kung baliktad? Okay? Paano kung baliktad? Okay? Si B, binayaran niya yung utang ni A kay C. Magkakaroon ba ng legal subrogation? Hindi. Mag hindi magkakaroon ng legal subrogation. Kasi malinaw. When a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred. In this situation, mas preferred si B. Okay, si C, binayaran niya si B. So, si C, magkakaroon ng uh, automatic na subrogation dun sa right. So, ibig sabihin, si B, kapag, ayun nga, binayaran niya yung utang ni C, ano man ang mga other rights aside from, uh, aside from, collecting the 2,000, hindi siya masusubrogate dun sa rights na yun. Kasi hindi siya pasok sa legal subrogation. Okay ba? So, that is number one. Okay? So, uh, when we check, there are actually three instances na magka pwedeng magkaroon ng legal subrogation. So, punta na tayo sa pangalawa. When a third person not interested. Okay? So, yung concept ng not interested person or parties ay nabanggit na natin sa payment. So, again, dadalhin natin siya pares lang dito. Okay? So, number two. When a third person not interested in the obligation pays with the express or tacit approval of the debtor. So, ayan. A owes B, 1,000. Habang, okay, si C, binayaran niya si B. Binayaran niya yung utang ni A kay B. With the express or implied consent of A habang binabayaran niya. So, in this case, magkakaroon ng legal subrogation. Dahil, yun nga, may consent ni debtor. Okay? So, in this case, C will be subrogated to whatever rights uh, the previous creditor have. Okay? So, yun. Yun ang mangyayari dyan. And number three, when, when, even without the knowledge of the debtor, it doesn't matter kahit na, walang, kahit na walang knowledge or kahit hindi siya pumayag, kapag isang interested person ang nagbayad ng isang obligation, okay, syempre, without prejudice to the effects of confusion or as to the latter share, um, magkakaroon pa rin ng legal subrogation. So, in this case, okay, example. Suppose in the same example, C is guarantor of A. So, yung same example natin, ito. Okay? Um, suppose C is the... Uh, 
Okay, so C, C base B. Ano yan? Suppose. Okay, so mukhang mali tayo na nakapipaste dito. Okay, so suppose in the same example, C is the guarantor of A daw. C is the guarantor of A. C is a person interested. Okay, so tama pala. A owes B. 1,000. So, tama. So, si C ay guarantor ni A. Tama, tama. Okay? So, the same example. So, ito, ito yung example natin. Tapos, move on to this. Si C, siya yung guarantor. So, siya yung nagbayad. So, uh, dito kasi sa previous example natin, si C ay isang not interested person. Not interested person. Pero in this case, dahil siya daw ay guarantor ni A, malam mo namang interested person siya. Okay? So, C is a person interested in the fulfillment of the obligation of A as he would be benefited by the extinguishment. If C pays even without the knowledge of A, C is subrogated to all the rights of B. So if ever my right C B to foreclose a certain mortgage or whatsoever or pledge or whatsoever, um, pwedeng makuha. Makuha yun ni C kasi siya ay isang interested person. So confusion takes place in the person of C, hence the guarantee extinguished but the principal obligation still subsists. Okay, so may extinguish yung guarantee dito. Actually, halos para din to dun sa nag-discuss natin underpayment. Okay? So, next, conventional subrogation. Um, when we say, when we talk about conventional subrogation, these are the, ano, these are the instances or the situations wherein hindi siya pasok dun sa legal subrogation, yung 1, 2, 3 na in-illustrate natin dito. Hindi siya pasok dyan. So, pwede pa rin magkaroon ng subrogation basta merong, uh, merong consent ni third person, consent ng original parties. Okay? So, ayan. Basta merong consent ng lahat. Yun lang ang kailangan dyan. That is what you call conventional subrogation. Napag-usapan ng lahat. Okay? So, next. Meron ding tinatawag na partial subrogation. So, what is partial subrogation? A creditor to whom a partial payment has been made may exercise his right for the remainder and he shall be preferred to the person who has been subrogated in place in virtue of the partial payment of the same credit. Okay. So, example. D is indebted to C for 10,000. C or X pays C 6,000 with the consent of D. Okay. So, in this case, ano siya? Um, with the consent of D, so pasok siya sa legal uh, subrogation. Pero... Ang binayad lang kasi, 6,000 out of the 10,000. So, nagkaroon ng legal subrogation pero partial subrogation lang. So, there is partial uh, subrogation as to the amount of 6,000. So, basically, ang nangyari, nahati yung debt, yung 10,000. Nahati siya between 6,000 and 4,000. Okay? So, yung 6,000, utang na yun ni D kay C. And then, ni, kay X, kasi siya yung nagbayad. And then, yung natitirang 4,000 ay utang niya pa rin kay C. Okay? Pero ang tanong, if kulang yung pambayad ni D, kanino muna magbabayad? Okay? So, D remains the creditor with respect to the balance. Okay? Thus, two credits subsist. In this case, in case of insolvency of D, C is preferred to X. Okay? Ang una muna ang babayaran is yung original debtor. I, original creditor, I mean, nung 10,000 na yun. Okay? So, that that is the rule in partial subrogation. So, in terms of partial subrogation, ang magiging preferred in uh, in terms of insolvency or kapag kulang yung pambayad ng debtor is yung original debtor muna. Okay? So, okay, so that is our last okay topic for the extinguishment of obligations and also to the whole obligations topic. So, by next meeting, contracts na tayo. Okay? So, uh, medyo tricky ang contracts pero so far mas madali naman siya compared sa obligations okay so again please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to alert you on the upcoming release um so far nakakapag-upload na po tayo araw-araw so uh, hopefully maging consistent tayo okay so don't forget to like the video if you find it helpful okay and again merong link sa description to test yourself okay so coming up next we have contracts the general provisions of contracts okay so see you on the next video